Have you noticed your hair becoming thinner over time? I know firsthand how discouraging it can be when you're noticing your hair starting to thin because you feel like that there's nothing you can do and nothing seems to work. Well, in this video, I'm gonna walk through some of the common causes of hair thinning and what I'm doing to try and improve my density. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina and here I make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love talking about the science of hair and doing beginner tutorials, really helping you problem solve with your curls so that everyone can achieve healthier hair. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. So let's dive in. So before we get started, I wanted to give the disclaimer that I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice by any means. I'm simply someone who has experienced hair thinning and I wanted to share my experience and my journey. And I also love researching about hair. So I try and compile all of that for you in a very simplified, easy way to follow. So that way you can help figure out what's going on with your hair. So that way you know the right questions to ask when you do seek a doctor's help. So I will have all of my sources listed in the description box down below. So let's first cover how do you know if your hair even is thinning. So there is a difference between just general hair shedding and hair thinning, and it can be really hard to tell the difference, especially with hair thinning. It's something that happens gradually over time. I know for me, it was something where I didn't really notice it until I look back at old photos and I'm like, wow, my hair has significantly reduced in density compared to what it was like two years ago. And for me, it's been very gradual. It's not like I had bald patches or huge chunks of hair falling out. It's something that was gradual and due to some internal causes that I will cover in this video. So that makes it a lot harder to notice. You know, a lot of times I would question myself, am I going crazy? Is my hair really thinning? Is this just normal shedding with curly hair? So with naturally curly hair, we tend to notice our shedding a lot more because our hair normally will shed anywhere from 50 to 100 hairs per day. But with naturally curly hair, those hairs get stuck in our hair. So you're not gonna actually see that hair fall until you actually brush through your hair, which is usually on wash day. So sometimes if you go five to seven days in between your washes or in between detangling, you're going to see five to 700 hairs all at once in your hand, which can be really scary, especially if you're not used to wearing your hair curly and you're not used to that. I hear a lot of times from you all that when you start taking care of your curls, you feel like your hair is falling out, but really you're just not brushing it. You're not treating it like straight hair. So you're noticing that shedding a lot more. So a cause for concern is if you notice a significant increase in shedding. So for me, I was noticing shedding that was happening not only on on wash day and during detangling, but it seemed like it was at every single step of my wash day routine. So when I was styling, I was seeing a lot of hair fall, just styling and brushing my hair. Also when I was refreshing, and like I said, if you're detangling, when you're refreshing, you're going to see those hundred hairs that you shed from the day before, that's normal. But if you're experiencing wads of hair coming out when you are detangling, when you're refreshing, or just at every step of your routine, and that is different than what you were seeing pre Previously, then that's when it's more of a concern. You want to look at your hair and see if it has changed in density over time. So for me, I take a lot of photos of my hair, which is actually really helpful because I'm documenting my hair's progress. And really the best way to tell is leave your hair product free and let it air dry without any manipulation. Then you can see really how your hair just exists naturally. That's really the best way to tell. I don't really have a lot of photos of my hair like that. So I'm mainly looking at my hair styled and I can definitely see it and it's not always noticeable to other people. So if you are noticing that your hair looks a lot thinner overall, like it's more transparent, which is something that I noticed. I noticed I just wasn't getting as much fullness and volume even when I was using the same products. It was a lot more transparent and I could see through mainly the ends of my hair. Other ways to tell is if you're noticing your hairline receding or just overall your scalp is showing more. So if you look at your hairline, are you seeing more sparseness? Has it changed in shape? Or if you're noticing that it's starting a lot further back. Now this is something that can be kind of hard if you haven't been taking photos, but just look at it and see if you can notice more of the scalp showing along the hairline. One other thing that some people notice with hair loss or with reduced density is they will see more of their part or their part might look like it has become wider or you might just see more of your scalp overall. So if you struggle with your scalp showing in the back from just your hairline going back further than usual, that's what I struggle with a lot 
or if you're noticing when you're styling you're really struggling to cover your scalp that's something i tend to notice a lot too it's just a lot harder to cover my scalp and it's more exposed and just out more because there's less hair overall and less density and if you're not already familiar with the term density that's just basically how full your hair is it's how many hairs per square inch of surface area on your actual head so how many hair follicles that you have aside from just seeing more scalp if you were experiencing hair loss and hair thinning you might notice actual bald patches that's a little bit more alarming and that's actually more noticeable if you are seeing patches of your hair fall out that's definitely more of a serious concern and that's more noticeable so if you're seeing that it definitely seek a doctor's help for that you can also tell by your ponytail size if you find that regular hair ties that you've always used are not holding or if you have to wrap them multiple times just to get your hair to stay up in a ponytail then that means that your overall density has reduced if your ponytail size is a lot smaller in circumference. There's actually a way to measure your hair's density with a measuring tape. So you can put your hair in a ponytail right at the base of your neck. I wouldn't put it up high for this. Secure it with a elastic and then take your flexible measuring tape and wrap it around the base of that ponytail right in front of that hair tie. And you can actually measure how wide your hair is or how many inches in circumference. So that's how many inches around in a circle that your ponytail is. So that's how you can actually measure your density. And so if you've noticed a change in that, if you've done this before and then you do it again, you definitely see a reduction there. That's how you can really tell that your hair is thinned. So now let's cover the common causes of hair thinning and then we'll cover what you can do to fix it. So most of the causes are caused by internal factors within your body versus something that you've done to your hair. Now definitely there's things that you can do to harm your hair on the outside that can cause thinning, but those are a lot less likely to happen. Usually hair thinning and hair loss is from internal factors. And this can be temporary, and we'll talk about the temporary ones, or it can also be permanent. So usually the permanent causes are things like age and genetics. So this is just our hair thinning out over age and because of our genetics. Like if you know that your parents had more hair loss or their hair really thinned out by a certain age, then it's more likely that you will because that can be a genetic factor especially when it comes to male hair with their hairline receding, that's obviously genetic and it just happens with age. I definitely had way more hair back when I was in high school. Sometimes I look at old photos and it's like, wow, my hair was so thick and long. That's just normal for our hair to thin out as we age. But what I'm really talking about here is that sudden change or that gradual change over a couple of years with hair for normally healthy people is what we're really covering here. Another huge cause that we can't necessarily help all the time is stress and trauma. We all experience stress. It's something that I'm definitely struggling with all the time. I work full time and I also do YouTube. So I definitely have a lot of stress and I need to work on taking more breaks and taking more days off. I'm not really good at that. So I definitely need to manage my stress more because that's not helping with anything. Also any type of illness or major shock to the immune system, like COVID, so many people experience hair loss after COVID and sometimes it's happening way after COVID as well. I've heard that from so many of you in my DMs. I definitely saw a lot of hair fall from it because it's really stressful for our immune system. It's a huge hit to our immune system. And a similar thing can happen when people have surgeries too. It really takes a hit for your immune system and your overall health. So some people will really experience hair shedding after that. Chemotherapy is also a very common one that you'll hear about where people lose their hair. And then pregnancy and childbirth. So these are times when your hormones change and a lot of people experience postpartum hair loss. It's almost inevitable, but at least with that, you know that it is temporary and it does come back over time as long as you're healthy. And menopause is another one where it's a change in your hormones over time. Once you reach a certain age, as you get older, most people do experience hair loss during that time as well. Then there are lots of different medical conditions that can lead to hair loss, but I would say the most common ones that I have researched have to do with hormone changes. Just like what we mentioned before, our hormones have a huge impact on our hair and how our hair cells behave. So any type of hormonal conditions, thyroid conditions. Also, I just remembered a lot of you asked me about thyroid. My thyroid levels are normal, so thank you for your concern. I've had a million tests done. I've also had an ultrasound done. Everything is completely normal with that. So that is good. So I did rule that out. That's one of the major causes too of hair loss and any autoimmune diseases. Those are also ones that often can lead to a reduction in overall hair density. Medications a lot of times do have side effects too. So I would make sure that your medications aren't causing your significant hair loss. Definitely bring that up with your doctor and then hormonal birth control, which I think this has had a lot to do with the reduction in my hair's density. Like I said, anytime you're messing with your hormones, that can lead to a change in your hair's thickness. 
And a lot of times we're seeing that with a change in birth control or if you recently came off birth control or if you started a new one, all those hormonal birth controls can really affect our hair. And so for me, I really noticed that when I changed brands of one just about two years ago, that was when I really noticed a change in my hair's density. But I've also experienced a severe iron deficiency. So that leads me to the next major cause, which is nutrient deficiencies or overall poor nutrition. So obviously if you're not eating a healthy diet, then you're gonna notice those effects on your hair and your nails and your skin. So make sure you're eating a well-balanced diet and drinking plenty of water. But sometimes other things can happen that can lead to major nutrient deficiencies, specifically heavy periods, which is what I experience from other issues and other causes that have led to the iron deficiency and the anemia for me. So I didn't know that I was anemic for several years. I think it was at least two years or at least a full year before it was caught with blood work. So various nutrient deficiencies such as iron, vitamin D, vitamin B12, zinc, I think also protein is another one. All of those nutrient deficiencies affect our hair's growth. The unfortunate thing with these nutrient deficiencies is it can take such a long time to recover and to see a difference. So I was put on an iron supplement by the instruction of my doctor. Make sure you're getting a blood draw to get a full panel to know if you're actually deficient in something. Do not go and take iron because having an excessive iron when it's not needed can be very harmful to your health. So you wanna make sure you're actually deficient. So you want to get that blood work done, but it can take such a long time to recover. So I was prescribed the iron supplement. So I had to take one every other day and it took, I think about a year to get them up or maybe it was like six months, I need to look back, but a really long time to get my levels back up in the normal range because we did it gradually versus like an iron infusion. So now my levels have been normal for over six months now. I need to look at the exact timeline, but it's been a long time since my levels are normal and my hair is still obviously thinned. So I know it's gonna take a lot of time and I have seen some new growth I can insert some photos and videos here of what I'm talking about, but if you're noticing short hairs like all over the top of your head that are sticking out, that can be either from breakage or new growth. A lot of times it's new growth because there's no way that I have that much breakage when I take such good care of my hair. I mean, some of it probably is, but it is coming back. But if you think about it, your hair is going to take years to grow back to this same length. So it's gonna take a lot of time for those shorter hairs that are now coming in finally to get to this full length. So I'm not really gonna see the density change until it can fully grow out. I should start to see it at the scalp, but considering I have so much of that new growth that is showing all throughout, I'm hopeful. So just to sum this up, all of these causes are typically internal, which means you need to seek a doctor's attention if you do feel like it's significantly changed or you are experiencing major hair reduction and density. You need to get blood work done to determine the root cause of this. So hopefully this part is helpful to actually determine what it could be for you so you know the right things to ask. Okay, so now how to fix it. So how am I fixing my hair's density? So number one is to fix the root cause. That's the number one thing. If you were experiencing hair loss from a nutrient deficiency or if it's iron like mine you have to fix that iron deficiency now I was trying out different supplements and serums and stuff a couple years ago when I had my iron deficiency and that is just fighting an uphill battle because internally I'm fighting against myself I have to make sure that my iron levels are normal before I start trying other stuff which is why you've seen that I have cut back on the serums and stuff that I was using before now I'm using them again and I'll get to that because I know that my iron levels are normal. So you have to fix it at the source. Next step is obviously to take care of your hair. If you're growing out your hair, you want to be taking the best care of it as much as possible to keep the hair that you have on your head healthy. So that means no aggressive detangling. I'm huge on this, especially if you're experiencing a lot of hair loss or breakage, you don't need to be ripping through your hair tangles with conditioner in the shower while your hair is wet. And that's why I'm a huge fan of dry detangling with a little bit of oil and just using my fingers to gently detangle because when you're experiencing a lot of hair loss, the worst thing you can do is get in the shower with a ton of tangles and then just mat it up even more with shampoo. So I highly recommend doing a pre-shampoo oil treatment, dry detangling, or at least use a conditioner before you shampoo to get rid of some of those tangles and the loose hairs before you go in and shampoo. So you also want to reduce the manipulation and brush styling as much as possible. This is why I've been saying the last couple of weeks that I really wanna cut back on brush styling because I obviously don't want to cause more shedding. Even though I'm using safe brush styling techniques and I'm using safe brushes, 
Obviously any type of manipulation can cause some wear and tear on your hair's cuticle over time. So I'm not completely ruling it out because my hair definitely lasts longer when I brush style, but I just want to rely on it less and maybe not do my entire head. I'm just trying to brush style a little bit less overall. And then I'm also trying to use less high heat. I always turn my blow dryer up when I'm diffusing because a lot of times I don't want to spend a ton of time diffusing, but anytime you're applying heat to your hair, that's obviously more damaging, but I try and use safe diffusing practices, like not holding it on my ends for too long and using a heat protectant. But I just want to be a little bit more diligent about the heat protectant and not using high heat the entire time that I'm diffusing. I'm also trying to maintain a very healthy scalp and make sure that I don't have buildup on my scalp. Buildup can also cause hair loss, only in extreme cases usually, but you wouldn't wanna go every single wash day leaving buildup on your scalp. That could accumulate over time and really clog those hair follicles. So I'm always making sure that when I'm washing my hair, my hair is actually clean afterwards and my scalp is clean. I always kind of check it and see because you don't wanna be leaving a ton of gunk left behind. So I'm also incorporating scalp treatments again and scalp serum. So this is what I mentioned I had stopped before when I found out about the iron deficiency because that was really just fighting an uphill battle. But now that I know that it's better, I'm trying to use scalp serums again to kind of speed up the process. I mean, it's definitely not gonna hurt, they do help. So I'm using the Curlsmith ones. This is not sponsored by Curlsmith or anything. You all know that I do love their products and I work with them all the time. But when I wanted to start using scalp serums again, this was the first thing that I had thought of and I wanted to try because I had heard so many good things. I've used them in the past and I did really enjoy them. So this is the Curlsmith Scalp Stimulating Booster and then the Full Length Density Elixir. So I have now finished two months of these. They say you wanna use them for at least three months to see a difference because it does take a long time for your hair to show differences like that. But so far, really like them. I definitely like using this booster in the morning. It's kind of like using a dry shampoo or like a foaming dry shampoo in your hair. So it's really great for refreshing too, especially after a workout. But aside from that, I've just noticed that my hair scalp is a lot better. I'm noticing less buildup overall. And it's also really good to be stimulating your hair's blood flow, which is what I usually do at night. When I'm using the full length density elixir, I will flip upside down to help with blood flow. And I will just give myself a really nice scalp massage with this density elixir to really help stimulate that blood flow. And then I'm also getting the good ingredients in. I also love that this is in a glass bottle as well. So I need to get more of these. I'm now out. I definitely recommend both of them together. There are other topical treatments like minoxidil I think I've looked into before, but I haven't tried that before, so I can't speak to it, but I know it's an over-the-counter topical hair loss treatment. And then there's also hair loss shampoos again, but I've never tried them and I don't know of any to recommend. I wouldn't ever wanna recommend something that I haven't tried. So if you've tried them and you've had great results, definitely share in the comments below. You can also take hair supplements. Now, Curlsmith does have their supplements with this, but currently I'm just doing the serums. I've tried the supplements before, but when I found out about the iron deficiency, I needed to start taking iron supplements. Oh, and I also had a vitamin D deficiency. I forgot to mention that. I was deficient in vitamin D as well, not as bad as the iron, but I've just now started taking vitamin D pills. So I've only been taking those, I think since about, September and I've noticed a big change in my nail health since I've been taking that um, So definitely get those levels checked and all too if you're gonna check for iron check for vitamin D as well I wish I had started taking those sooner, but I was just trying to get the iron fixed So I'd stop taking these supplements because I really just didn't want to interfere with the absorbency and my doctor wasn't really sure if those would so I just wanted to get that fixed and really fix the root of the problem. There's also prescription hair growth treatments. Never tried them and I don't have experience in them, but that's something you talk to your doctor about. And then there's also hair procedures like transplants and stuff that obviously only a doctor can help you with. Also laser hair growth devices that use like red light therapy and stuff. I've never tried those, but I'm definitely curious and if those work and if any of you have tried those, let me know. So there's a lot of different things that can treat hair loss, but I just wanna reiterate fixing the problem and really getting to the root of the problem, especially if you're somebody like me that you know I'm only 30 I shouldn't be having major hair loss and I'm relatively healthy I don't have any major health concerns I don't have any like medications that I'm taking that should be causing it aside from the birth control but that's a whole nother thing but if you're overall healthy like me and you've started to notice your hair density really reducing the last couple of years that is a cause for concern because especially if you're eating great and everything you shouldn't be experiencing that so that's why i wanted to kind of focus this video on that because that's even harder to figure out the root cause when you're overall pretty healthy also you want to be patient as i mentioned this is definitely a long journey and it's going to take a lot of time for your hair to fully grow in if you have experienced hair loss so you have to be really patient with it. I've definitely had a hard time at this. 
And you also might wanna get a trim. I recently got my hair cut. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's shorter and it looks so much fuller. I really let go of trying to have long hair because my hair has gotten so thin that I really just can't grow it out without it looking stringy and sparse. It just does a lot better when it's short. Plus if I'm having that new growth come in, I mean, some of it's like down to here now, I'm seeing like these shorter hairs stick out. And so it almost kind of looks like layers now, but I get just a blunt cut overall, no layering, because every time I try and get layering, the ends just look very sparse. So a trim can make the world of a difference. Get a fresh trim, rock a shorter look, and it should make your hair feel and look a lot thicker. And if you're looking for ways to actually make your hair look fuller, I have done a whole video on how to make your hair look fuller. And that really has to do with the styling techniques and the products that you use, because that does make a big difference. There's certain things you might want to avoid if your hair is very thin and other products that can help make it look fuller. So I will have that video linked for you down below. And if you enjoyed this style of video, I think you should also check out the one that I did all about why our curl patterns change because a lot of these causes are similar, but also kind of different. So if you've noticed a change in your curl pattern, if your curls got a lot looser over time, or maybe you randomly got curls and you didn't used to have curls, definitely check out that video. I will have it linked right here on the screen and I will talk to you over there. Bye everyone.